Hello and welcome to an introduction to the world of SEO. Uh, with me, Alib Nelms, founder of Lumen SEO. Very, very excited to be doing this. Thank you so much uh, for having me uh, employability bridge end. So this is part of the uh, Digital Futures Festival that um, myself and quite a lot of other um, employers and people in kind of the tech space and marketing space have been lucky enough to be a part of to hopefully just share, if, if anything, just a bit of a story um, behind how we got to where we are, but also um, some kind of practical and active tips um, about how to get into industries just like ours um, without necessarily needing to go down the traditional route. And that's what my workshop now is going to be about. It's about how the instructions and the practical tips I want to give you are ones that are conducive to someone who maybe doesn't want to do the kind of university route, A-level route, that kind of traditional route. Um, that's that's what I want this to be all about. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get stuck in. Quick notice, my voice is on about 70%. By the time we get to the end of this, it may have gone down to about 50%. We're going to see. Uh, there's been a lot of, lot of talking this week, which has been great. Um, but yeah, really excited to get stuck in and, and hopefully uh, you guys get some get some use out of this. Um, my email is there, so if you have any questions um, you want to ask or you weren't able to watch the whole session, um, feel free to get in touch. And um, yeah, looking forward to, to seeing your questions and, and hopefully working together to grow your grow your career options. So to start, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story, almost like the Lumen story, uh, through the medium of memes, because there's no there's no better way than to tell stories through memes. This is 2024 now. Um, I'm going to tell you a bit about what SEO is. So again, if you if you kind of come to this and thought, oh my god, like I don't even know what SEO is, like how am I going to send what you're saying? It's cool. I'm going to talk you through it. Um, I'm going to kind of talk to you about the why and the how and the what of SEO. So why people go into SEO, how they get into SEO, and what kind of things you can expect to be doing as someone in SEO and what kind of person SEO might suit as well. Because it's a lot broader than you think. I think SEO gets commonly stereotyped, if you like, as a bit of a, a kind of IT, you know, geeky subject, where actually it takes a great deal of creativity, um, takes a great deal of experimentation, um, and a great deal of learning as well, because it's always changing. Um, we'll be talking, I'll be talking a little bit about SNO and NAI if we get a bit of time, um, and then I'm going to head us uh, head over to some questions that have been sent in as well. So let me tell you a story, a very, very normal story. It's probably the one that if you're between the ages of around about 15 to 20, you've been told by now, and it's the, um, you know, it's, it's the traditional root story. I'm going to tell you a slightly alternative one about how sometimes things don't quite go the way you planned. Um, start singing, singing the lyrics to uh, the opening of Friends soon. Um, but things don't always go how you planned and sometimes, and that's a good thing. No one ever has things completely planned. And I should mention as well, if you don't know what you want to do in life, I should mention that some of the most interesting people in the world never find out what they want to do. Um, I still don't know what I want to do. I'm just bouncing from different things to different things that to me just look like really good fun. Um, so I graduated from university in 2018, I know. I see everyone calculating the age now, okay? I'm 27, all right? 28 next month. Um, and as you can see, my dad loves his uh, Scooby-Doo tie. It's uh, an absolute hit at any family arrangement or funeral. Um, he's genuinely worn that at a funeral before. I know what you're thinking. Um, so I, I graduated with a, a degree in music, uh, music business. Um, and as far as the degree is concerned, practically, absolutely fantastic, really enjoyed it, made some great new friendships. Did I need it to be doing what I'm doing now? Absolutely not. No way. Um, do you need a degree to get into SEO? Absolutely not. Do you need a degree to get into marketing? Absolutely not. Okay. But for me, as someone who you know grew up in the countryside and wants to kind of, I guess, slowly integrate into a more urban life, um, it was a really good good way to do that um, and we're lucky to do that so it was one way of doing of getting to the same place but there's multiple ways of getting there I guess is what I'm trying to say and then after university worked for a travel startup for a year probably had probably one of the best times of my life probably too much fun to be honest I think that's partly why it ended up failing in the end um, so I was the marketing uh, director for a, a travel app called Alpaca but I had made amazing memories really enjoyed it and actually, it was one of the best experiences for me because it helped me learn how not to do things as well as how best to do things. It was one of the best lessons. And if you're thinking of working in a startup, um, you're worried about maybe will it pay enough or whatever. One of the best things about working in a startup is that you, you experience all of that up close. 
you really learn what it's like to try and learn it, try and run a company and, and you get to know the stresses and the strains and you'll get to you get a real experience of some of the highs as well that you get as as a really small team and, and that's what I loved here. I loved the startup mentality. But unfortunately it went down the pan and so I had to start looking at jobs and I kind of spoke to my partner at the time and we thought, look, let's let's get me on the career ladder, let's get me on the straight and narrow. Uh, what a mistake that was. Um, I tried to pursue the traditional route, and as you can see here, did that through the medium of uh, buying trousers to do job interviews in, because I just thought, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a black trousers guy, that's what I'm gonna do. It's ironic, because I'm wearing black trousers today, so that doesn't mean anything. Um, so yeah, went, went, went shopping, tried to get some, tried to get a, a good interview get up. Um, that's me sending my uh, flat bum to uh, a, a number of friends as I'm trying to uh, try these trousers on. Did a few interviews and got a job at a very classic business, large corporation, um, just based just outside of Cardiff. Thought, here we go. I was on 26,000, um, 26, 25, 25,000. And I was like, right, this is it now. I'm going to climb the career ladder, work this, work this big company, walk my way up. This was my expectation. Teamwork, happy teams, happy people. This is what you get sold, right? When you look at job descriptions or you look at the kind of biographies of companies, it's like, you know, we're a, we're a happy collaborative space with positive relationships. And you kind of get there and you realize that there's a bit more to it once you scratch at the surface. And the reality was, I promised you memes um, and the memes have been delivered. It was very much about the goal of many workers seemed to be how little can I do today to make it look like I worked. That was one of the kind of shocking things. Um, a lot of people were there really not to want to deliver any impact or to, um, and if it was my one bit of advice to your career, like follow the route of impact, like whatever impact means to you, whether that's a cultural thing, a social thing, like whatever piece of change you want to see, a job is a way that you can make that happen. And there was a lot of people here that I feel could have been, you know, there were people who are enthusiastic about art, about culture, about music about media but they just weren't doing them because they didn't see it as like the traditional route and that was quite energy sapping for me and, it, and I think it to be honest towards the the end of the first year I was there really started impacting my mental health because I was kind of I don't know I just felt like I was at a bit of a loss and wasn't pursuing something that that I loved but this is kind of if you want to look at the weekly conversation typical conversation in one of these places it kind of went like this Sunday was the, oh God, it's happening day. You know, we've got to wake up tomorrow. It all happens again. Dread, dread, scare, scare, that kind of thing. Monday, it was pretty much just girl Mondays. Everyone hated Mondays. Monday again, you know, that kind of thing. Tuesday, how is it only Tuesday? Wednesday, halfway there. You know, we're almost there. Um, Thursday was when people would generally start talking about their weekend plans to make it feel like Friday so they could think about when work ended. And then Friday, people pretty much just did nothing. Like, like, Productivity on Friday is awful. It's part of the reason at Lumen SEO we actually have a, a four day week because of that, because you can effectively do what you want to do within a Monday to Thursday, no questions asked. Um, and then Saturday was your freedom day. You know, you were free um, to realize you have to do, you know, two rounds of laundry and the hoovering, uh, but a bit of freedom in the morning. And I just thought, I don't know, surely there's more to life than this. Surely there's more. And so, that's kind of why I'm here. Um, I quit my job then, started Lumen SEO, and Lumen SEO for me was a way of questioning, well, can we create a business that's not only transparent in its delivery, but also just a nice place to work? Like, don't be wrong, I don't expect people to be jumping out of their beds on a Monday, getting super excited, you know, but just, what, could we have a world in which, or could we have a place to work in which people went to bed not dreading the next day? Um, and that's that's what I wanted. That was the goal, and that's the goal we're we're currently pursuing and achieving. And when I say currently achieving, I mean the fact that it's never achieved. It's something you you constantly go for and reach for, and try and improve and and use feedback to improve the working conditions um, as much as you can. So started my business and got COVID. Um, so I started my business pretty much from a, a makeshift desk, and I had to make it out of a out of a cupboard. Um, because I didn't want to give my flatmate COVID at the time. Um, and so that was kind of my first two weeks. So it wasn't the kind of, yeah, like the big, you know, throwing papers in the air thing that I thought starting a business and quitting a job was going to be. Um, I realised, okay, this is this is just me now. But then Luminesio was born. Um, and it's it's gone from strength to strength since. We've gone from uh, just me um, to currently five of us. And um, that will be growing again next month. So... Really, really happy with where it's gone. Um, I think we're turning over, for anyone who's interested, I think we're turning over almost 200,000 a year now. 
Um, so it's, it's getting on that nice growth scale. Um, but also, and most importantly, we're a happy company. We're a company of happy people. Um, you know, not every day is perfect, but most days are pretty good. And that's the most important thing. A wise person once said to me, judge your life by the average Tuesday, not by the weekends, not by the birthdays, not by the holidays. Judge it by the average Tuesday. Like if your average Tuesday is pretty good, then life is pretty good. Um, and I really like that. That's a nice rule to live by. Um, there's the squad. So why am I here? Well, I'm here because I want to introduce people like you to a new way of thinking about employability, a new way about thinking about, um, or a new way of, of thinking about what work can be, what work can mean, and that actually doesn't matter who you are. If you have the capacity to be creative, you have the capacity to be determined, be hardworking, you can change any part of the world you like. Genuinely, that's like, genuinely true. Um, if you have the right idea at the right time, or um, you again, you just wake up every day with a little bit of purpose, you can do great things, and that is available to everyone. Degree, no degree, um, you know, poor upbringing, rich upbringing, like you can do, you can do it. Um, so I'm here to talk about SEO specifically a little bit, just because that's the industry we're in, um, to give some practical steps, to, I guess, to all this kind of storytelling and stuff. I want to actually be practically useful um, in this session, as well as you know, a bit of a hopefully a bit of a <laughs> bit of a laugh here and there if we can. So for those who don't know, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. And in, in a very short description, it's essentially all about making changes to a website to make it get more traffic. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. We make changes to websites that make it get more traffic and help businesses grow. It's one of the most sustainable forms of marketing because generally once you do it, it's the gift that keeps on giving um, and involves a lot of things as you're about to see like copywriting, um, website development, uh, building of links, quite a lot of PR in there as well. Um, so yeah, we're going to get stuck in. So first of all, let's, you know, let's paint a nice rosy picture um, of SEO as a career path. Although it may sound niche, demand for SEO workers is growing. In fact, 53,000 people were employed in SEO in 2016. That's grown, it's over doubled to 136,400 in 2022, and obviously that's even larger now. So the demand for SEO workers is growing, and the great thing about demand is that it tends to introduce um, a higher salary with that. You, you can negotiate a higher salary, and that's why the average salary of people in SEO is 32,000. Um, one of the big things I probably, numbers is great and salaries are great, but actually I just love the low barriers to entry. I love the fact that as an industry, it's one of the easiest to start and get into. And I'm going to show you uh, five ways, I believe, of how to make that happen. Um, a fun thing, but also what a challenging thing about SEO is that it's always changing, it's always advancing. There's always new techniques, there's always new secrets that, that Google haven't told people about that kind of someone works out and then the ideas spread. So it's definitely an industry for the learners, for the ones who, um, if you've been on the scale with like, like legal work, for example, like the law very rarely changes, SEO changes like every three months. Um, so if you think of it on a scale, it'd be a bit like that. But the biggest thing is that it's future proof as well. I think there's a lot of concern, you know, we, I said I'd kind of thread AI throughout this. You know, I think because of AI and automation, there's a lot of concern that a lot of those jobs that you may have been aiming for may not be there in five, 10 years time. SEO is here for the future. Search is always gonna be a thing. We're always gonna need to search in some way. The way we search might change, smart speakers, um, you know, uh, smart glasses, whatever, but people are still going to search and people still need to find the right options. And so SEO is something that will always be here in some capacity, but it will evolve and that's the exciting thing about it. So what kind of people enjoy SEO as a career route? Well, it's massively diverse and can be taken in so many different directions. So if you thought that SEO was kind of a technical thing, but you're more of a writer, you come to the right place. If you thought the SEO was going to be more of a writing thing and you're more of a technical person, you've also come to the right place. Um, SEO is a place for creative scientists, IT geeks, PR enthusiasts. There's an, there's an avenue of SEO for everyone. And it's quite good if you like being someone who wants to specialize in a, in a form of marketing, but ultimately wants every day to be a little bit different. You don't want that role to get samey. Um, that's generally what SEO is all about. So, kind of into the meat, meat and bones of the session now. So, how can you get into SEO and upskill without a degree? First of all, and honestly, one of the ones I love seeing when people apply to us as a business, um, to, to apply to our internships, apply to our um, assistant roles, start a blog. Not only does it show this wonderful level of independence, um, this wonderful level of innovation and creativity, 
um, but it's also incredibly easy. Um, platforms such as Wix, Medium, LinkedIn, Tumblr, they all offer free ways of being able to publish your own thoughts, your own opinions, and your own structured pieces. So pick a topic you're passionate about, use a trending title. Um, you can find those in, in Google Trends or Keywords Everywhere, those kind of tools. And structure well, work on, work on making something that really reads well and is enjoyable to read in its structure, but also in its, in its written capability. Second one, if you're not much of a writer, starting an online shop, like learning how to get your products and your, your website pages on Google, learning, <clears throat> learning how to measure traffic, learning how to measure your audience, is a great way of learning SEO. So starting an online shop, whether that be um, selling something you're able to make, so creating something, reselling stuff. Some of my favorite stories from when I go visit schools is kind of young people who have bought, you know, secondhand trainers off Depop or whatever, and then resold them somewhere else for a higher price because they've cleaned them or, you know, replaced the laces or whatever. Um, but my favorite little story is that. And, and some young people are making a lot of money doing that sort of thing. But it's also a great way to learn business skills, to learn SEO and marketing skills is by finding something to sell and selling it. It really can be that simple. And thanks to the internet, there are platforms out there for everyone um, from eBay, Shopify to Amazon. Yeah, there's no shortage of channels that you can use. Thirdly, then, why not take an online course? So if you're not necessarily ready to start a business or, or start you know, just selling stuff, um, sometimes just taking a course and, and getting learning on your own about SEO is the best way to go about it. And the best part is learning about SEO is completely free. Um, I would personally recommend the Google Digital Garage. Um, that's probably my favorite um, platform. It's the one that I've, what I use to start to get in the industry. Free courses on there. But there's also HubStop, HubSpot have courses and Moz as well that you can get into. And at least sometimes a couple of the first courses are free. Um, so you don't have to start paying anything immediately. So again, if you, if you, the idea of buying and selling something is a little bit daunting, take an online course, um, really worth doing. Fourth then, guest writing. So if you don't really want to launch your own blog, um, but you're a keen writer, um, guest writing will not only allow you to practice your creativity and writing skills, but actually also improve your communication skills. So you've got to pitch those pieces, like you've got to pitch those blogs to writers, to blog owners, to media sites. Um, so you're kind of taking on two skills there, which is awesome. Um, and you've got businesses, media, blogs, they all want you know, new articles, they all want articles from you. And all you need to do is write that piece and find their email address and you've got it. Like just pitch it to them in the best way you can. Pitch them and find out, you know, explain to them, this is why your audience are gonna love this article. And then last but certainly not least, if you wanna go down the, the employed route, um, apply for an internship. There are plenty of SEO internships. I already showed you how many SEO jobs there are out there. We tend to recruit interns every year as well. Um, we're just a small business, right? You know, think of the think of the massive ones, what they could have. Um, and again, you'll have a greater chance of getting on these internships, if that was kind of your next curiosity or question, if you use step one to three. Um, so if you start your own blog, if you start selling a couple of things, um, that will give you a much better CV, especially if you're worried, oh, I don't have a degree, don't have any big qualifications. Well, show me something else, like show me a level of self-starter there. Show me that you've got some initiatives and creativity to get going. You know, show me that thing that someone with a degree can't show because they've been busy, you know, heads in the books kind of thing. And then whatever you do, please, please make sure you start a LinkedIn and just, you don't need to post, you don't need to comment, you don't need to engage with anyone. But using LinkedIn almost as like a live career feed will get you ahead. Employers look at LinkedIn now. I think it's something like, uh, particularly in the marketing industry, it's something like 75% of employers will look at a candidate's LinkedIn before before they check their application. It's a normal thing now. So having that rolling narrative of what you've been getting up to um, can bode really, really well for, for growing your portfolio um, and growing your reputation as well. So what jobs are available in SEO? Well, there are loads. You've got everything from copywriter, SEO strategist, executive, Technical SEO specialist, if you want to go more down the development IT route, SEO specialist, SEO consultant, SEO inter there's so many. And then if you attach the word junior or senior to any of them, it gets even more diverse. Um, the best part is you can take it in a direction you want. So you can start off as an SEO intern, find out that you love writing articles, and you go down the route of a copywriter or a content manager. Um, that's a role that we have here at Lumen SEO, because um, content's such a big part of, part of SEO. 
But you also go down the technical route. You love fixing websites, great. Like you go down the technical SEO specialist route and you, and you go in that direction. You can take it in a direction you want. And SEO is far more diverse than people tend to, uh, tend to think. So thank you so much for uh, having me. Really, really enjoyed um, hopefully delivering a little bit of um, a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of inside information, a few tips and hopefully a couple of laughs um, on what it means to be an SEO. Um, appreciate this is a pretty short session um, as it's kind of from these uh, online kind of live stream things. So if you have any more questions, you want any more information, please follow us on Instagram uh, slash lumen.seo. You can also find me on LinkedIn as well personally and I'd be happy to reply to any, any messages on there. Um, but there's also my email there and my work WhatsApp as well. Um, yeah, so please feel free to do that. Uh, before we finish, I'm going to head to some questions. Okay, so first question is, how would you explain what SEO is for those new to the subject? So hopefully we've kind of covered it there, I guess. But essentially, SEO is making changes to your website to make it get higher traffic, but also higher quality traffic. Getting the right people to websites is just as important at getting, at getting more people to the website. Um, second question, with the rise of voice search and mobile usage, how has the SEO field changed in recent years? Well, in that way, um, voice search, the amount of people using voice search is, is increasing year on year. Um, but what's funny is actually the level of people making um, actual like typed in searches isn't actually going down. More people are using search than ever before every year. So the, the amount of users of search is increasing, whether that's within a social network search engine or a Google search engine the actual amount of people searching has increased. Um, what has changed is how long the search terms are. Because Google is getting better at understanding what you want to search or what you want to find in your results, it's better at understanding more of what you want to see with less words that you give it. So it's getting a lot smarter in that regard. Thirdly, what qualifications do you need to become an SEO specialist? Well, hopefully I mentioned it there. Um, there's not a lot of apprenticeships, really. It's more of a, a kind of... Um, unstructured intern route, um, it's kind of self-starter intern route to get into SEO. Um, as far as qualifications, zero. You don't need qualifications. Like ensuring you're a, you're a semi-decent writer, you can write pretty well. Um, and again, just showing some kind of self-starter initiative in there, showing that you, you really are keen on creating things, changing things, improving things. That's the kind of mentality that works really well with SEO. So no qualifications needed, really. Um, just you, you may need to find that you're, you're going to challenge your writing skills a little bit more, um, creativity skills a little bit more. But one of the things I love about SEO and the marketing industry in general, the barriers to entry, like I said, are super low. Um, so it's about going there with the right mindset of wanting to constantly improve, wanting to experiment, being comfortable with failure and learning from your failures. It's more of a mindset thing. Like having the right mindset is great for SEO, less so than having the right qualifications. Any great SEO firm like ourselves will teach you how to do great SEO. You know, that's our job. Fourth then, uh, for those new to SEO, what key skills or areas of expertise are needed to enter this sector? For those new to SEO, what skills? Hmm, what key skills or areas of expertise are needed? I think it kind of, it's a bit of a repeat of the last question, really. Um, what key skills or areas? I would say if, if you're a good writer, that's a great way in. Um, if you know how to make changes to WordPress websites, um, if, you, if you're fairly familiar with, with any website-based platforms, that works really well. That's quite a good in. Um, I would say it's those two really. And, and just like I said, understanding how to write creatively is always a great, great way in as well. I would say if you were to kind of look at all the skills of, of our team, you would, you would notice that everyone's got a fairly good writing capability. And then lastly then, uh, in your eyes, how can someone enhance their employability and stand out in the competitive job market? Start, just start something, start something. Like don't rest on your laurels, like create that blog, start selling that product, um, start writing those guest posts and pitching them to people. Um, start doing those courses, right? Doing those free online courses. Just start doing something. Show that initiative. Initiative is everything, especially if you're applying to small businesses like ours. Be it, for me to be able to see what you're trying to do, for me to be able to see what you're trying to achieve and, and what direction you want to go in is much better than you telling me. So show me, don't tell me, show me what you can do. Um, and I think that's it. So those barriers to entry are so low, which is fantastic but that means you've still got to jump through that barrier. You've just got to get started. You've got to create something of your own rather than expecting someone just to you know, pick you up and, and teach you everything, um, you know, spoon feed you all that information. So hope that helps. Thank you so much for, like I said, thank you so much for, for having me and uh, allowing me to, to speak to you guys, be part of this, um, this great festival. And uh, yeah, really appreciate it.